Hey guys, uh, Nathaniel here. Uh, let's jump right into it. We're starting off with heat maps. Uh, so these things are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm going to be generating some uniform data. Uh, it's in a matrix form. Uh, heat maps either take matrix or pivot table form uh, and passing it directly into the heat map. Uh, you'll go ahead and you'll see it's color coded. It's completely random, so you'll see very little patterns in here. Uh, if you give it a matrix, so we'll just put in numeric indices. Um, and then over here, you basically have uh, what the colors represent in terms of numbers. Um, you can go ahead and set the min and max of those numbers by saying v min and v max. Um, what you can also do is use uh, use robust. Uh, this robust will basically say let's clip our data at 98 and 2 percent. Um, so take the 98th and the 2 percent quantiles uh, and use those as the min and the max. Um, that's it. Um, you can't really see that a lot here, so if you make normal data, I'll sort of show you that this will actually make a little bit of a difference. So the 1.6 is a little further down here. The 1.6 is further up here, so it's normal data has a little bit more tailed. Um, so as I was saying before, you need to use pivot tables if you actually want to go ahead and uh, use a data frame um, with a heat map. So you just go ahead, you take your data frame, you dot pivot, uh, you specify the two uh, axes that you want to pivot on, you specify what you're counting. Um, sort of see this. So this is looking at passengers over years and over months. You'll notice that um, as the years get up, we get more passengers. And you'll notice that August and July are very high in passengers, some sort of summer travel. Um, you can go ahead and you can include the numbers in each one of these sorts of things. So instead of just having this sort of color-coded diagram, you can actually write in the numbers that belong here. So 606 was the highest one. Uh, <clears throat> on some random data, you can go ahead and specify the x ticks labels to be every two and y tick labels not to be there. Um, what you can do is for a data like this, so something that is not necessarily square to begin with, you can force it to be square. Um, you can also turn off the color bar and just sort of have a pretty picture. Um, the last thing that I wanted to do is sort of show you how to make a mask. Uh, so, so in this case, this, this code right here, this will make the mask. Uh, this, this core variable, let me show you what it looks like. This is just basically a big array of correlation, okay? Um, so the mask, so in P0 is like core. This is going to basically take all of uh, the sort of top diagonal and turn it into ones. Okay, so this is, this is a really sweet. Um, I'm, I'm not really super sure. It's a, it's a really sweet function. Um, if you go ahead and instead you um, uh, uh, you turn the mask instead of zeros and ones, you make it into trues and falses right up here. You can go ahead and you can pass this mask in and this will specify all of the cells that you don't actually want to include in your heat map. Um, so, somewhat cool. Um, heat maps are pretty useful. They are useful only when you're trying to um, visualize uh, data over, over two categories, um, generally speaking, unless you're, unless you're going to be binning them. Um, so you're trying to develop or you're trying to show sort of, excuse me, so you're trying to show the, the fluctuations across these two categories. It's kind of like a unique way of, of showing three-dimensional data. Um, I don't use these super often. Uh, I just, I don't find them super intuitive, actually, for developing them. Uh, I, I almost like the two-dimensional KDE um, uh, a little bit better. Um, but, you know, to each their own. Okay. Um, I hope this was useful. Uh, we're going to be doing one on time series after this, which will be a little bit more fun. Um, and thanks for sticking to it.